What do air taxis, local competitions and metro trains have in common? I'll let you think about it and we'll come back to this question at the end of this talk. Let's start with the idea of a pollution blanket. Imagine sleeping outside on a summer morning and someone throws a thick blanket on you. A blanket that is way too excess to maintain your comfort temperature. We can all relate to this discomfort that a single thick blanket can cause. This is a powerful analogy because it can help us comprehend the pollution blanket of greenhouse gases that we have been covering the planet with for a better part of the last century, leading to climate change. Climate change is one of the largest issues that troubles the planet right now. And if we continue at the same pace, there's a real potential that the temperatures may rise by nine degrees within our lifetime. This issue is no longer something that only concerns the future generation. And that's the first thing we need to understand. The second is that out of the many components that contribute to climate change, transportation has one of the largest shares. This pie chart by the US Environmental Protection Agency shows the greenhouse gas emissions by sector. And we can see that transportation accounts to 29% of the emissions and is the single largest contributor. It is extremely difficult to control because most of its sources are not concentrated in one place, but sparsely spread throughout the world. And there is not much you can do other than spread awareness and wait for technology to concentrate these sources in a single place. And I feel like that's where the upcoming innovations in emission controls and electrification of transportation are marching towards. Let's first look at some of these efforts and then see how institutions are contributing towards reducing it. And this is one other pie chart that breaks down the greenhouse gas emissions in the transportation sector by source. Among all the transportation vehicles, light duty vehicles, which is a fancy term for passenger cars, contribute to a major chunk of transportation share. Airplanes, on the other hand, are one of the most efficient. Jet and out of the jet powered ones that do pollute, do so at an altitude much higher up in the atmosphere. They also do not have as much as an impact on ground temperatures as other significant sources. So, out of the many solutions coming in to replace these distributed pollution sources from cars and other land-based vehicles, two promising ones from NASA stand out. The first is related to this fancy looking vehicle, which is part of the Advanced Air Mobility Program. It encompasses of using current technology of batteries and flying vehicles to come up with electrical alternatives that can fly a 50 mile radius and can ferry cargo or people. The most popular implementation of this, which is extremely well known, is flying taxis. The idea is to take a small group of passengers from one place to another in an eco-friendly way. While there is an ongoing debate of whether if this technology is green enough, because there is a pollution component that gets added during the manufacturing of batteries or during and during power generation to propel them. But one cannot deny the fact that the implementation of this technology does achieve a singular objective to not leave emissions distributed out in the open, but gather them concentrated in the single place, may it be within the battery or near the power plant. So advanced air mobility is still a much greener alternative for short distances and last mile connectivity. The second initiative deals with long distances and it is to upgrade jet engine flights with efficient designs to ferry more people and fit more cargo, just like in the AAM's case. One such design is the double bubble design, which looks like this. What it does is essentially combine two fuselages in a way such that the shape of the plane is basically two planes merged into each other. 
instead of just the wings generating lift to fly, the entire body works like an airfoil and achieves lift, thus reducing its wingspan. This, along with the use of current composite materials, results in lower weight, allowing the use of smaller engines and producing more efficient thrust. Both the advanced air mobility and the double bubble aircrafts have been in development for some time now. There are many companies that are coming up with their own ideas to bring these solutions to the masses. The, f the double bubble is being worked on by Aurora Flight Sciences, which is now owned by Boeing. And many companies like Airbus, Kitty Hawk, Joby Aviation, etc. are coming up with advanced air mobility product designs that will be in a functional shape within the next five years or less. But to properly combat transportation's emission levels, we'll have to move down one more level, from government and businesses down to universities, where the relatively new future of the world is coming from. I have two personal examples from the University of Cincinnati, where I am a graduate student in. First is my research work, which is associated with creating more efficient jet engine components by using computer simulations. Shown here is one such component, which is a part of a turbofan engine. For the last two years, I have been helping write codes that I can reverse engineer old jet engine components from their digital models. This is important because once we have the digital models, we can optimize them further by latest standards and come up with more efficient designs based on their rated constraints, like airflow or thrust. That way, you can reuse the components from older jet engines and then save the environmental costs that arise when manufacturing an engine component from scratch. The other thing that I'm extremely involved with on campus are competitions that help solve problems in the local community. Our university organizes competitions for students to come up with new ideas and solutions under the Cincinnati Innovation District ecosystem. What they do is give us real life problems in and around the Cincinnati area and ask us to come up with solutions in a week time. Students from multiple disciplines like architecture, design, business, arts, communication and engineering come together to contribute. They also offer mentors who are current industry experts in a related domain to help us. Competitions like these bring out our specific perspective with which we can solve a particular issue. They also have an added benefit of helping solve local issues while building our resume. For example, the most recent competition was about integrating advanced air mobility to solve cargo related problems under the Fly Ohio initiative. And our proposed solution would result in reduced traffic stress on the bridges that connect Ohio to Kentucky, thus producing a drastic reduction in emissions from cargo vehicles within the next five years. Shown here is a map of downtown Cincinnati, which connects Ohio to Kentucky. And the five yellow lines on the river are the bridges. The leftmost comes from the international airport that carries cargo and then the rightmost one comes from the Lunken airport which is on the southwest Ohio. These both are generally filled with heavy cargo vehicles and our idea was to incorporate advanced air mobility vehicles to help ferry that cargo from one side of the river to the other. So organizing competitions that look for solutions in our local neighborhood is a good way to encourage university level activity and help students contribute towards reducing climate change. This is also a pretty good example of how businesses and governments can come together to help university students understand the depth of climate change while putting their specific technical skills to use. So you can be like, hey Ben, I love how the government, businesses and universities are working hard to combat transportation share of climate change at their own institution level. But I'm just an employee. I'm just a kindergarten teacher or I'm just a housewife. How can I help contribute as an individual? That's 
a pretty good question. Remember, we talked about how pollution blanket is a huge issue because it's finely distributed? Well, there is one other thing that's also finely distributed, and that's population. What it means is that every individual's contribution goes a long way because collectively we are the population. We have around 7 billion people and even though it's reaching 8 now, but if you kick out 90% of it and count only the remaining 10, it's still 700 million people, which is not a small number. And each of the 700 have enough to contribute. In other words, we have scale. So with that in mind, there are two things that we can be mindful of as individuals. First is that one of the simplest things to combat climate change and to contribute towards reducing the pollution blanket is to look at our individual transportation choices. I understand that we all have our needs and luxuries and we cannot completely sacrifice our comfort. We could, however, start with monitoring what comes out of our own transportation needs and tackle it with a plan. Instead of just reaching for the car or motorbike keys every time we get out of our homes, we could break our vehicle choice into different tiers. For example, if it's within a kilometer, try walking. Then take a bicycle for the next two or so kilometers. Setting distance specific goals and if the requirement goes beyond that, try switching to public transportation. Coming up with a tired plan to attack the transportation side of things is one way to deal with an individual's impact on climate change. The other way is to look at the type of transportation for cases when we don't have a choice. While it's a no brainer that cycling is the best possible choice, it should be followed by public transportation like buses, metros, electric trains, and for the worst case, maybe just go with motorcycles for individual transportation. One useful way to think is in terms of passenger miles per gallon when it comes to fuel consumed. What it means is that a type of transport that consumes less fuel for a given number of passengers for a specific distance contributes the lowest towards pollution blanket. Basically, the more people you can take with you in your vehicle of choice, the less the pollution. A final thought is about passenger cars. While going car free is a straightforward suggestion, it is not generally possible for most users. So as technologies evolve and travel gets cheaper, controlling our trips should be a conscious decision. Also, just using ride hailing facilities, which are the facilities in which a driver comes to pick you up and drops you from point A to point B, like Uber, Lyft, or Ola, using them and thinking that it will help reduce environmental impact is not a sound idea. A Union of Concerned Scientists report states that these ride hailing services result in around 70% more greenhouse gases than the trips that they are replacing. So we need to be cautious about what we are replacing our current needs with as well. If we must use ride hailing services, then it's best to inculcate carpooling and convert the ride hailing into ride sharing by bringing in more people along with you in your journey. Carpooling also reduces the number of cars on the road and helps reduce travel costs for the individual. This goes back again to the concept of thinking in terms of passenger miles per gallon. Now, these steps may seem insignificant, but we need to remember that when we are acting from an individual's point of view, we're also affecting people around us and that results in collective action against the pollution blanket. For example, when individuals shrink their consumption of fossil fuel products, simple economics dictate fossil fuel companies to be incentivized to produce less because there won't be enough demand from people to consume. So going back to our initial question, what do air taxis, local competitions and metro trains have in common? These are all parts of collective efforts that we can contribute to right now and help regulate the thickness of our pollution blanket so that our current generation can sleep peacefully.
Thank you.